But I thank God for this democracy. It's like Ronald Reagan said last night. And he said a brilliant thing. And don't think it's easy for Ronald Reagan to say a brilliant thing. <laughs> don't get nervous. I'm not going to make fun of the President of the United States. I can't stand everybody who makes fun of a person just because he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> I think, I think, I think Ronald Reagan is probably one of the greatest presidents that ever lived. That's right. Just so happens, this is not his field, and that's <laughs> right. No matter what happens, he jumps on a horse, eats jelly beans, and runs, and runs. <laughs> he is so busy, they keep hollering, Mr. President! <laughs> and a <I'll> leap. <laughs> It's a new type of a president. Every other president we ever had always looked troubled and miserable and nauseous. As soon as they were elected, they became miserable. Remember, Carter looked so oh, and so miserable. <laughs> Johnson was nauseous and nervous. <laughs> Nixon so oh, and so nauseous. <laughs> this guy, ha, presidents couldn't figure out what to do because it was murder. They, they were overwhelmed. They couldn't figure out the solution. This man don't know there's a problem. <laughs> That's why he looks younger and younger every day. He keeps laughing and running. He is so happy. He's the happiest president we ever had. I found out why he's so happy. He can't believe he got the job. <laughs> Why do you think he's the first president we ever had who looks younger and younger every day? Even when he's doing nothing, he looks so happy doing nothing, you think he did it already, you don't know what. <laughs> he came back from Reykjavik from that meeting with Gorbachev. What happened? He said, nothing. Everybody said, thank God. <laughs> then he jumped on a horse. Where you going? Ha, ha, ha. I shouldn't say he does nothing about everything, about certain things he did a lot. Not about El Salvador, El Salvador, nothing. Nicaragua, nothing. But when he found out there's two black people and a Chinaman in Grenada, he wiped them out that <laughs> And I'm proud of him because since then Grenada has never attacked this country. <laughs> For years I couldn't sleep nights. I kept wondering, did you hear from Grenada? <laughs> But people love him because he's firm, he's firm. He doesn't might be on uh, different sides of an issue every day, but he's always firm no matter which side he's on. I said to him, how do you feel about abortion? I'm against it. Unless the girl is pregnant, that's another story. <laughs> but people still love him. They love a man who's tough and firm, but he's doing something or not. I figure it don't bother him, why should it bother you? And okay. That's why nobody voted for Mundell, because Mundell reminded everybody of Carter, always nauseous and miserable. He made the whole campaign about one issue, the deficit. Is this a deficit? I never saw such a deficit, a deficit. Kept hacking a deficit. I, a de Reagan gave him the perfect answer. He said, there's no deficit. <laughs> Everybody said, but there is. He said, so there is. <laughs> they said, what should we do about it? He said, don't mix me up. Then he worked out, he worked out a whole plan how to solve the problem of the deficit. The plan was brilliant. There was a brilliant plan. He said, if you spend more and more money on defense and you take in less and less in taxes, as it unbalances more and more, it balances out budget. <laughs> he said, how does this work? He said, ha, <laughs> <laughs> But he's been brilliant on this Iran scam situation. He explained it perfectly. Everybody was accusing him, but he had a whole explanation for everything he did in Iran. Did he explanation? What a brilliant explanation. First of all, he never heard about it. <laughs> so maybe he heard about it, but he doesn't know who told him. Somebody told him, but he wasn't listening. There was a guy talking, but he doesn't know about what. All he knows is that he remembers something. He doesn't remember what he remembers. But he remembers that he should have remembered something that he can't remember right now. But the only thing he remembers definitely is that he forgot. But it all started, but it all started, they said to me, you made a big mistake. He said, I never made a mistake. But you did. Well, maybe I made a little mistake, but it wasn't an important mistake because I didn't know I had the job at the time. I knew I was working. I forgot where. I knew I was a president. I forgot which country. I knew I was elected. I didn't know where. 
But I knew that whatever I knew, it's not my business, it's not my field, I don't know. Besides, when they told me I couldn't avoid it because they were talking on this side, I only heard on, on that side. You don't remember nothing at all? Don't you remember, don't you remember when the Tower Commission made a report that he made a big mistake? So he went back on television at the time and he announced, this is the biggest mistake I ever made. About what? I don't know. <laughs> initially, initially, when it first started, he claimed that he never sent arms to Iran. They said, but you did send arms. Well, maybe it was small arms. It was only for short people. It can't hurt anybody. <laughs> They said, was there another country involved? There was not another country. Well, we have proof that there was another. Oh, you have proof? Okay, so there was a country. <laughs> the funniest thing is that not only was Reagan never involved in this whole situation, but according to the hearings, nobody was involved. The CIA was never involved. The State Department never heard about it. The Defense Department never did it. This whole government did it without a government. <laughs> there was no government at the time in this country when this happened. <laughs> How can you accuse people who did not have a government? Turns out that one guy by the name of North, who never made more than $85 a week, was controlling the whole world over there. <laughs> Richard Nixon is really the greatest man of our time. You know, a lot of people hated Nixon. I always loved Nixon. Compared to these people, I loved them. I love a crook who knows his business. <laughs> but Nixon, life was interesting. Every day there was something missing you didn't know what. You could see it, he took it. I used to get up every morning to see if my furniture was there. <laughs> I think Nixon was the greatest genius of political history. The greatest genius. You know what he accomplished? Every week they caught him. And every week somebody else went to jail. <laughs> and he kept saying, oh, I don't know what they're talking about. People say to me, you shouldn't even pick on him. He's got phlebitis. It's syphilis, not phlebitis. <laughs> you can't screw 200 million people and wind up with phlebitis. See, I'm very careful what I say about people. I don't talk this way about Ronald Reagan, because I know Ronald Reagan is an honorable man who didn't get caught yet. And you shouldn't blame him for the deficit either, because the deficit is not his fault. It's not his fault. He can't do nothing about it. This is no job for a Gentile. <laughs> we need a Jewish president. We need somebody who knows how to show a profit for this country. <laughs> this is the richest country in the history of the world, and every year we lose money. We have had one successful season yet. <laughs> Somebody's fooling around with the books. That's not the real reason. The real reason is that the Congress and the Senate, they get paid whether we lose money or not. So they don't even care. Why should they care? I said, put them on commission. 